50-pound mini tractors, the 92,000, 9,200 pound modifieds, and the 20,000 pound semi trucks. Dave, welcome. Thank you very much, John. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm looking forward to Indy Super Bowl 13. And of course, uh, this is the granddaddy of them all when it comes to indoor competition, over a $130,000 purse. And the guys will be going all out tonight to try to make full pulls and win the classes. Sounds like an exciting evening. Dave, let's take a look at those classes for tonight. The three classes that we'll be running, the first one will be the 1,550-pound mini rod. Now, this may be a, a small amount of weight for a lot of you that may be new to the sport, except it's one of the most exciting classes of NTPA competition because the drive and the engine, the tires, the entire frame is weighing in at 1,550 pounds. You're talking about a small garden tractor type machine with a V8 automobile engine with a supercharger on it pumping out about 1,500 horsepower. And Dave, it seems like uh, this class would allow some people with a little less money to get into this sport. You would think so, and years ago that was the case, but nowadays it takes a lot of dollars even to run the mini rods. The second class is the 9,200 pound modify class, and this will be the real barn burner, the monsters of the midway, as we like to say. We've got all the big names of the sport here tonight, and we'll tell you about them later on. The third class will be the 20,000-pound semi-trucks. We've got five of the best trucks in the country, and they're going to be running a variation of uh, uh, machines, including the Mack trucks and the, the Peterbilts and Kenworths and things like that. So if you're in the semi-trucks, you'll like that class. So we've got action lined up for you tonight. Stand by for session one. We're set to start pulling tractors here, and in session one, the first class will be the 1,550-pound mini tractors. Our first driver who's set to pull tonight is Larry Koopshaw from Wauseon, Ohio. And there you can hear the engine in the background, and we're set to start action at the 1986 Indy Super Bowl number 13. Well, John, let's set the parameters right now. The track is 200 feet long. For those of you watching this tape for the first time ever, it's a very simple, fast-growing American sport. Simply the tractor in this respective class, the mini modifies that can pull the sled the furthest will be our winner. Larry Koopshaw from Wausau, on Ohio, been involved in mini pulling for many, many years. He's running a, of course, all of these chassis are homemade. He's running a 500 cubic inch Keith Black Hemi racing engine. This is the engine built in California. It's a very sophisticated motor. Probably a $20,000 uh, check will take care of a motor like this. He can build a lot of RPMs, a lot of horsepower. He comes off the line. To start things off, that was almost the perfect pull. He had the tractor very nicely balanced. And he's going to be, from where we sit here at our table, about uh, 15 feet short of a full pull. All right, we have the instant replay coming up on the monitor here. You, you can see that he stayed pretty well in the middle of the track. Not a lot of right-to-left movement, and that's one thing that they want to do. He, uh, he's a very accomplished puller, been around the sport a long time, and it doesn't really matter whether he pulls first in the class or last. You can always expect Larry Koopshaw to be there. And here is the reading, 190 feet, 2 and 6 tenths of an inch, 192 and 6. So he comes up uh, about 10 feet short of a full pull, and that's an awfully good run. That'll be a tough pull to beat here tonight. Now, Dave, in the in the uh, mini tractor class, a full pull is 200 feet. Yes, it doesn't matter what class we're running tonight, whether it be mini rods, big modifieds, or the semi trucks, a full pull tonight will be 200 feet. And of course, if we only have one driver that makes a full pull, then naturally he would be considered the winner. But if we have two or more tractors or trucks that make full pulls, then we will go into a pull off and simply they'll go back to the starting line and start things over again. So the weight box goes to the rear of the sled. Uh, of course, the, the brand new sponsor this year, Counter insecticide, nematicide, and we welcome American cyanamide. So they'll take the weight transfer machine back to the starting line, and the track officials, the NTPA track officials, are out there uh, making a decision whether they like the setting on the sled or not. And, John, this may be a good opportunity to, uh, to, to talk about uh, the setting on the sled because uh, they may have a restart if they don't like the setting on the sled, but that looks awfully good out there to me. So we're ready for a restart here in the mini tractor class. Brad Shively will pull now. The NTPA officials have redistributed the weight. Brad Shively out of Philmont, Pennsylvania, running the fourth. Now, just before 
he left the line, John, as you indicated to everybody, they restarted the class. They decided that the flood was a little heavy after Larry Coopshaw made his run, so they restarted. So that's our first full pull of the evening. We'll see it here. And here it comes up on the instant replay. It looked like he got a little bit to the right side of the track, but it didn't hurt him a whole lot. He didn't have to get back out and hit the left brake and pull it back out into the center. He was able to keep it going down the track. Here again, he's a very accomplished driver, and, and as you said, he got over there to the right-hand side. They touched the brakes very lightly. You notice the front end came up. The distance, 206 feet, 11.9 inches, 206, 11.9. And, of course, that's a full pull since a 200-foot pull here tonight is a full pull. Set to go here in the mini tractor class is Ken Buttlemeyer. From, he's the first Hoosier tonight from Hoagland, Indiana. He's running a Protac chassis, which is a professional chassis with a 540 cubic inch Rodec aluminum block motor. About a tough break in the action here tonight. He did not let off with the gas. He thought that it might come around, and it didn't. And I'm sure the one thought that had to pass through his mind was the fact that Brad Shively's machine is sitting right here in front of us, and he's not any more than eight or nine feet away from that machine. He also, here it comes on the replay, we'll see him, he'll get over here to the left side of the track. All right, you can see he's heading for the left. He keeps it going. The front end is up, and he just doesn't back out of it at all, something that we would not expect from uh, Kenny Boltmeyer. Now, something we may want to keep in mind, John, is that he was the, the test puller in this class. That's right. Because so. he's the test puller, he can turn down the run, so that's why he laid right into it and stayed into the end. And his distance comes up 190 feet and five-tenths of an inch. But, of course, uh, he will be disqualified for going out of bounds. All right, uh, John, I want to correct a statement I made a moment ago. We saw Kenny Boltmeyer heading toward the left, and he, he stayed right in the tractor, and he went out of bounds. We had thought that there was a restart. They have not restarted the class, so our leader is still Brad Shively out of Milmont, Pennsylvania, at 206 feet, 11.9 inches. Kenny Boltmeyer has been disqualified for running out of bounds. So here comes Richard Peters now out of Thornville, Ohio. Rich is uh, running a Chevrolet engine of 481 cubic inches, which is a very popular engine in all of uh, pulling motorsports. Been pulling for several years. Pulls a lot of the Ohio State Tractor Pullers Association. So now the distance to beat is 206, 11.9 inches. Shively is in the lead. Green flag comes out on the starting line. The track's in excellent shape tonight. Here again, a perfect start right off the line, right down the center. in front of our broadcast booth. John, for a while it looked like he was going to head to the left-hand side of the track, but he was able to keep it between the white lines. That was a nice piece of driving by Richard Peters, and he's got a, he's got a good solid pull. It's not going to be long enough to put him in the lead, but he's going to be, he's going to be right up there around uh, 198 feet or so. Here it comes on replay. We'll try to pick it up, and you'll see that he does drift a little bit to the right, but he was able to stay in bounds as he went down that right sideline, and he's got to he's be pretty happy with that pull. The Buckeye Special, Richard Peters out of Thornville, Ohio. And here's the distance, 195 and 7 tenths of an inch. Looks like he got a little hot right there at the end of his line, or end of his run, rather. Let's hope that he hasn't done any damage to the engine. Next up, uh, the runner-up Grand National Champion, Greer Hamilton. Tell us about Greer, Dave. Greer is uh, one of the very unique people. Uh, the first, many people believe that the hottest modified mini-engine uh, tractors are out in California with the Sidewinder pulling team and the Flying M ranches. Here's Greer Hamilton of the Sidewinder. They were the runner-ups in this class on the Grand National Circuit. He's running a Pro Track chassis and a 588 cubic inch Rodec. Interesting thing about Greer in 1985, he had almost a perfect season. The engine ran beautifully, and he rarely does any of the work on the engine. They just hadn't, didn't have to tinker with it at all this year. And a lot of the guys were wrenching on him and working awfully hard. 
and Greer hardly laid a wrench to it. Changed the oil and the plugs, and that was about it. He said, I had a perfect season, and this is his first season out on the Grand National Circuit, all the way from California. If he could bottle that and sell it, he'd be rich. You're exactly right. No question about it. We'll see a lot of Greer Hamilton this weekend, and he certainly has to be one of the favorites of this class. An absolutely beautiful tractor. Green flag is raised for Greer Hamilton. He's getting his RPMs up, and here he goes. Oh, something has happened on the line. The engine quit. We might have a kill switch pull out. And I hope we didn't jinx him about the with the things that we were saying about his perfect record mechanically. Well, from where we sit here at trackside, it doesn't look like he has gone by the 75-foot mark. If he was able to shut it down before then, they'll allow him to have a repull. If it's a problem with the kill switch, the officials, if they deem it that it was not his fault, then they will allow him to repull. We'll try to pick it up here on replay. We'll see that he never, uh, really never got started. He started to torque up the RPMs at the starting line and pulled away. And uh, as you say, Dave, it looks from our vantage point that he didn't even make it past that 75-foot mark. We'll have to wait for the official ruling on that. And uh, we have the graphic up right now. It says 76, 4 and 1 tenths inches. He is over the 75-foot mark, so the only salvation that he would have at this time is uh, did they find out that the kill switch might have pulled out. He's looking at the back of the tractor right now. The NTPA officials are right down there. If they deem that it's of no fault of the kill switch, uh, that may be it for him. We'll get word here from the NTPA officials in just a moment. Greer Hamilton, uh, that just ran a moment ago, went 76 feet. However, he attempted to stop it before it went to 75 foot mark. The NTPA officials have deemed that he will come back in a little bit. Here's Denny Horse now out of Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. Chevrolet, many consider either the number one or number two modified in the country. Day in and day out, he comes off the line. He's the favorite in the to lay off the throttle here again, John. A lot of guys today have gone to the left-hand side. And that really cost him on that one. He had to back way off of it and hit that right-hand brake to pull it back in, and then he tried to get back into it, but he just couldn't. He just started to dig in. All right, now we can see it on replay, and as you said, Dave, he's going to go to the left side of the track. All around the 100-foot park, he just started to, to shade over towards the left. At about 80 to 90 feet, the tractor immediately made a jump to the left, and he has won here before. He got over to the left. He had to back out of it. He didn't want to go out of bounds. And he gets a pull of 162 feet, 5 and 8 tenths, 162 and 5. No more practice. We've seen one. Well, here are the standings as we have them right now. His running mate, Brad Shively from Milmont, Pennsylvania, is in the lead at 206.11.9. .9. Peters is in second at 195.0.7. And now Denny Horst is going to come back at 162.5.8. On deck now, Larry Gusto from Washington, Ohio. He's back on his free ball there. He's bouncing around. He's ramming, cranking the motor. He's going all out. He's going all out. a new leader. Brad. No doubt about that one. He was able to keep it in the middle of the track and really got it hooked in. Brad Shively had been in the lead at 206 feet, 11.9 inches. Shively screaming the engine made a beautiful start here again. You can see he was working the brake. Front end came up. Power went to the rear tires. Excellent pull. We'll see it. Here it comes up on replay now, Dave. We'll see that he was able to control the, the tractor and keep it right there in the middle part of the track. Got good tire speed early and was able to translate that to the back of the tractor and really pull it out. John, he's probably turning his tire somewhere in the 130 to 140 mile an hour range. And it was bucking on him pretty good out there. He moved a little bit to the right, working the brakes slightly, and excellent run. And that's the way you have to pull this class all out. And it's a pull of 215 feet, 6.6 .6 inches, and we do have a new leader. Larry Koopshaw from Wauseon, Ohio. The Koopy Special. All right.
right, Dave. On deck now is Glenn Guther of Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Give us the rundown. Well, it's a precision engineering chassis, and that's a very popular brand of tractor out in that part of the country. Here again, he's running a Rodeck aluminum block motor. He doesn't waste any time. He gets right on it. The distance limit, 2, 1, 5, 6.6. He's on it. thrown for a loop. We could not see down on the starting line, and it was dark down there, and that's Brad Shively. Our apologies to the viewers. Brad Shively out of Milmont, Pennsylvania. And he came up with a good pull. That's going to be good enough to put him in, in second place. It looks like a little bit over the 200 foot well, I, I tell you, John, I've been in this sport a long time, and every once in a while you'll blow it like that. I had uh, expected Glenn Gunther to come up. Here it comes on the replay, Dave. Tell us about it again. Well, I apologize to Glenn. Brad Shively, and this is the way uh, that he comes off the line. This time he started out on the right-hand side of the track a little bit more. He was worried about going to the left. He, he moved a little bit to the right, working the brakes a little bit. They're really getting the front ends up. I think they're trying to get as much weight as they can on the back. They're taking some chances out there. And, of course, the distance to beat, 215 feet, 6.6 .6 inches, and he comes very close. And here it is. It's 201 feet and 1 inch, 10 inches. 10 inches. Almost 201, 10 inches. Almost 202 feet. Excellent run. And, John, if we take a look at the standings, that should put him him now in second place. That's right, Brad Shively is now in second. Next puller for this evening will be number, uh, well, he's he drew number 44. It's Glenn Gunther from Pine Bluff, Arkansas, and he's getting set to go. Well, he's got the hot chassis, the precision engineering with the 588 Rodex, as we mentioned a moment ago. And if he nails this, here again, all these guys are competitive in this class, but if he nails it on the line and he's got it properly balanced, he certainly has a shot at the lead. Hookshaw in the lead at 215 feet, 6.6 .6 inches. Glenn Gunther, who has come on the NTPA scene the last couple of years. He can really turn the tires. He'll have no mercy on the engine. He breaks it off the line. is going to be a close one. The distance to be 215 feet, 6.6 .6 inches, and I believe that he has surpassed it. I believe so too, Dave, and of course we're second guessing here from the side, but it sure looks to me like he passed that 215 foot mark. That was a dandy run. All right, here we've got it on instant replay, and I think you'll see that he really got it. Uh, he got the tire speed going well and got the front end up just enough. Didn't let it get up too high and was able to stay off of the brakes and take it right down. Here he goes. John, the whole idea is when you come off the line to keep it straight. You want the power to go to the rear wheels, and when he did the wheelie, it was at the right time. He didn't have to work the brakes much at all, and he's going to now take the lead, 219 feet, 11.6 inches, 219, 11.6. This will drop now Larry Koopshaw into second, Brad Shively will drop to third, and Richard Peters will be number four. Dave, we've got a big one left for the last pull of this class. It's Greer Hamilton, a runner-up Grand National Champion, and he has to beat 219 feet, 11.6 inches. Well, John, this is the way you like to finish a class, and these minis are all very competitive, as we've seen here tonight. It's been a tricky track. They've been all over, but I would say that Greer Hamilton has as good a shot as anybody here. He's got a whopping 219 feet, 11.6 inches to beat. He can turn that motor loose. Greer Hamilton excellent 1985 runner-up grand national champion in this class as they take the starter out there put it into the supercharger and fire it up you can hear you can hear the engine jump to life and the ntpa officials are getting into position now you're looking at about uh, 15 to 1600 horsepower on these alcohol supercharged motors the green flag is out he's got a whopping 219 feet to beat as he comes on line He pulled it right out the end. All the way from California, 2,600 miles to make it here. What a way to finish the mini rod class.
Well, we seem to have a little bit of a flair for the dramatic here so far in the 1986 Indy Super Bowl. The crowd is giving him a big round of applause here. And here, here comes the replay. You could tell it was all or nothing. All or nothing for Greer Hamilton. He just got into it and took off. This is the way he ran in all of 1985, John. Coming right down the center here again. Don't touch the brakes. Get that front end to lift a little bit. Transfer that power. Once again, the tractor wanted to go to a little bit to the left, but he was able to bring it back and keep it in the middle of the track. And here it is, full pole. It's official. A full pole for Greer Hamilton, and he's going to win the class. He wins the class on the last run of the class. And that's the way you like to see him. That's right. We'll be hearing from Greer Hamilton with Dave Grimm. So stand by. With me from Rank Lancaster, California, Greer Hamilton, the guy that just won this class, a dramatic finish right at the end of the class, and his son, Tom. Greer, a tremendous run. After that first pull where you went 76 feet, did you ever think that you had a chance to come back and win it on the last run? I was really hooked before that run leak let go. So I felt confident that we could get her down there. Tom, uh, you had to be very nervous on the sideline. Yeah, real nervous. Uh, when that thing broke the first time, I couldn't tell what was going on. We got it back. It was just a broken part on the throttle. Got it fixed, and it hooked up good. You had you had rough competition here tonight. You bet. We beat the best. And we feel pretty good because we came a long way to do this. Thank you very much, and our congratulations to you. We're ready to start the 9,200-pound class right. modified tractors, and we've got some of the big boys. I believe they call them the monsters of the midway out here. First puller tonight to set the sled will be John Walsh. John's from Austin, Wisconsin. He has a homemade chassis and an Arius engine. He's getting set down at the east end of the track, and the officials are getting set to go. John, this is probably the most expensive motor that you can buy in this form of uh, racing or pulling today. This area is nearly 600 cubic inches. He had a tremendous 1985, the best year ever in pulling, running three of them here in the 9,000 modified. There's only one heavier class, and that's the 12 Open, which we'll have later on in this program. And a little bit of a delay down at the starting line. Now the flag goes up, and John Walsh is on it. out of it right here in front of us just about the 200 foot mark a little bit past that it looked like he was going strong up to that point but he cut out he cut the engine out pretty quickly i'm not sure if there was a problem with that machine or not well the weight was coming on him very quickly here the i modified the engine to run real good now the track is talking with the here it is on the replay, right down the center of the track. It made a little bit of a move to the left, but I thought the tractor was awfully well balanced here on the 9 Modified. He has plenty of power in this particular setup, and then all of a sudden, boom, he came to a stop. 205 feet, 11.9 inches. 205, 11.9. And we will wait to get the official word if the NTPA officials are happy with the setup of the sled or if we will restart the class. Next up in the 9,000 pound modifieds, Gardner Stone, Middlebury, Vermont. Gardner tonight running the new twin Allison that he built uh, this past year. Two Allison aircraft engines setting side by side. We've seen Allison's run, of course, here at the Super Bowl many, many times. The 1,710 cubic inch engine. A single Allison will pump out about 1,000 horsepower stock. Now, we've got two of them side by side. However, they are twin turbocharged each. They are injected motors. I would say Gardner would estimate power at somewhere around 2,500 a feet. So you're looking at about 5,000 horsepower together. He had a pretty good 1985. A lot of people now are watching these twin Allisons that have been injected and turbocharged, and certainly they'll give these modified V8, these Rodex and these Aries and a lot of these Chevrolets, a big run for their money. Gardner Stone is a um, General Motors and a Ford dealer in Middlebury, Vermont, very picturesque New England town. When you hear about that much horsepower, you wonder 
how they keep that aircraft engine on the ground. Well, when it flew back in World War II, it was one of the most dependable motors that, that way here in tractor pulling. Won't make quite as much noise, but it can make power. He's on it. The front end comes up. Oh, it's a wild ride. It's a good one. The right-hand side is going to be close. Excellent run for Gardner Stone, just the way he's been putting them down in 1985. Extremely close to a full pole. We'll have to wait for the official notice on that. It looks like it could be just a little bit short. You can actually see the stress on those tires down at the bottom. You can see them begin to bunch up and wrinkle a little bit if you look close. Mr. LTF, loud, tough, and legal. Here it is on replay. And there, he just took it from the starting gate and just got on it early. He looked good all the way down. Here again, he made a little move to the right. He had to have been pushing the left brake. Here again, the front end came up. Beautifully balanced tractor. Went by the 200-foot mark very easy and came real close to almost a full pull of 228 feet, 7.1 inches. Not quite enough for a full pull at 228, 7.1. On deck now, Sonny Owens from Hardwood, Hardwood, Maryland. He's got a Ford tractor. A year ago, John, Sonny Owens had a tragic thing happen on the interstate. He had built two new tractors about a year and a half ago. Uh, to an unfortunate accident and fire on the interstate, both of the new tractors burn up. He then turned right around and built two more new tractors, this being one of them. He's running three 607 cubic inch Ford engines. So for Ford fans, this has certainly got to be a tractor they've got to look at. He can make a lot of power, won a lot of pulls. He's running the staircase engine setup that John Shaw made very popular with the Northeast Raiders. Sonny Owens, just a swell guy and a tremendous asset to the sport. Green flag is out. He'll get on it hard. off the throttle. He backed off. He had about five feet to spare on the left-hand side. I thought he was going to go right to the corner, but he backed off a little bit early. That pull is going to leave him a little bit short of the lead. He was trying to stay in bounds, and as, as we saw in the mini uh, tractor class, a lot of drivers pulled to the left, and he got a little bit worried about that left sideline, I believe. Okay, here comes on replay, and we'll pick it up. Well, John, as we'll see here in just a moment, he starts going for the left-hand side. Here again, he had a beautiful start. We've had a lot of great starts tonight, but he starts pumping the right brake. He is really pumping the right brake. He didn't want to go out of bounds, of course, because that would be an automatic disqualification. And with a good run like that, he did the wise thing and back off of it. And that'll move him into number two at 218 feet, 11.8 inches. 218 feet, 11.8 deck now is John Shaw, a veteran of Indy Super Poles. He's from Fultonham, New York, homemade chassis, and a Chevy engine's on that tractor. Backing into the weight sled and getting all hooked up. He has to, the, the leading distance right now is 228 feet and 7 inches, and so he'll be shooting for a distance better than that. John Shaw, of course, a long-time puller. We can remember John running a couple of Chevrolet years ago called the Longhorn. This guy is certainly one of the top five modified pullers in all the world today. Out of Fultonham, New York, former farmer, vegetable farmer, green flag is out, Ford Chevrolet. Deafening John right down here at trackside. And he was digging trenches deep enough to plant asparagus in with that one, Dave. Well, he had no trouble steering because the front end was pretty much glued to the track. He looked heavy on the nose. Perhaps so. He really he dug a couple of deep ones there right in front of us. Here it comes up on replay. It looks like it's good for around 200 feet. Nice straight pull. No problem, but as you say, he never really did get that front end of the air and get the weight transferred back to the back of the machine. Now those four Chevrolets, and you'll notice that the back two engines are turned around, and so all the clutches face to the center and go through the gearbox. Just uh, not quite the John Shaw type of run that he likes to have. Puts him in. And there's a good shot. You can see the, the trenches that he dug as he spun it in there, there at the end. 
that's going to put him now in fourth place. Your leader is still Gardner Stone with the twin Allison at 228 feet, 7.1. And Sonny Owens with the board is in second at 218 feet, 11.8 inches. Next up in the 9,000-pound modified class, Russ Jansen from Oregon, Illinois. A homemade chassis and five big Chevy engines on this machine. Nearly 500 cubic inches per motor, so 2,500 cubic inches altogether. And you've got a safe bet here that he's, he's running about uh, six to 7,000 horsepower. Jansen's have been pulling a number of years, uh, always tough in the modified classes. Russ is a, a machinery, used machinery salesman from Oregon, Illinois, and his wife, Carol, always at the events cheering him on and she used to drive her, in fact, herself. Russ, uh, not out of the circuit all that much in 1985, but he was able to qualify here for the 1986 13th Annual Indy Super Bowl. So now the distance to beat, 228 feet, 7.1 inch. Some people think that this looks like a Panther chassis, but we want to make sure the record is set straight. Russ Jansen built the tractor himself. So the big Chevrolets will come to life. He'll turn those tires somewhere in the 110 to 120 mile an hour range. Green flag is up and we're set for the run. Here he goes. He too, John, a little heavy on the nose. And he's going to be shy of 228 feet. However, it's going to be very close now for third, possibly third place. He stopped right here in front of us, uh, just past the sled, is just past the 200-foot mark. And as you say, Dave, never did get the front end up a little bit heavy on the front end once again. You can see from our vantage point the intensity even on the driver's face. He's clenching his teeth and trying to get more power out of that machine. Here it is on replay. Well, he made a good straight run. Uh, both he and Shaw have been a little bit heavy on the nose, maybe 100 pounds back. When you come up to a pull of this magnitude, a lot of times the guys will run a little light because they're going all out. And here it is, 203, 7.6, 203 feet, 7.6 inches, and that would put him in fourth position just behind John Walsh, who was at 205, 11.9. From Central City, Pennsylvania, now shooting for that leading mark of 228 feet, Tad Will, and he has a homemade chassis outfitted with a couple of Allison engines. Well, his, uh, their family has also been a, a twin Allison, very similar to Gardner Stones, but this is the single Allison, 17-year-old Tad Will out of Central City, Pennsylvania. Here again is the injected Allison, his twin turbocharged. And one of the reasons a lot of the pullers like the Allison is because it's a very dependable engine. You don't have to change the plugs or the oil all that often. And many of the drivers are still running the same engine they've had in the tractor the last five or six years. The pullers with the V8, they find it's very expensive to work on them. They have to repair them almost daily. And that's, uh, that's one question that people may have. Is there a lot of uh, changing of equipment and engines and machinery from year to year? Do, do teams do that? Used to be you could get by with your tractor for about three years the way that it was built in horsepower. Now many of the big names are changing every year. Here we go with Tad Will out of Pennsylvania. for the single Allison injected motor of Pinker Toy. And that is probably the best run for the way that tractor's set up that we've seen in the class, John. It's not going to be quite long enough to put him in the lead in the class, but it was a good run. He got out and got the, the tire speed he needed, and he did get the front end up. Uh, the last couple drivers we've seen have not been able to get that front end off the ground. Tad, Tad Will was able to pick it up. And once again, as he came right in front of us here, you could really see the stress on the tires. Here's the replay, Dave. Well, he wouldn't have had to pump the brakes very hard in, in this class. As we get the distance of 188 feet, 3.5 inches, as his tractor is shown here in the replay. Nice run, and he's got to be very happy. The Will family traveled to all the events. It's a family affair, and... They've had an excellent 1985 season. They're going to be definitely tough to beat in 1986. A good strong run for Tad Will. 
John Walsh, who was the test puller in this class, elected to drop six positions. He turned down his original run of 205 feet, 11.9 inches. He didn't like it. And now it's going to be interesting, John, to see if he can improve upon that original run. Remember, only the test puller can turn down that first pull. But there, there's no going back. He can't take that 205 if he does worse. If he only goes 75 feet, that's his distance this time. That's right. So it's a little bit of a gamble. 228 feet, 7.1 inches, the distance to beat. He comes back with the Aries. Now remember, he's had the opportunity to look at all of the tractors in the class so far, watch how they are weighted, and watch how they come off the line and the amount of horsepower that he has will apply. And so he's had an opportunity to take a little weight off the front end if he wants to. a gamble that paid off for John Wall. She's very close to a full pull. Well, these guys learn a lot by watching the pullers. And you saw the front end come up. We, and we've talked about how a couple of the tractors had trouble getting that front end up. And not John Wall. She had the weight distributed just right. When you're in a big pull like this and a lot of money on the line, nearly $2,000, you'll run a little light in the front because they know they got to transfer weight. The track may be a little on the soft side here tonight, and they know they've got to move weight to the rear tires. The really good run as he moves into the lead now at 232 feet, 1.1 inch, a little better, just about uh, four feet better than Gardner Stone. Gardner's distance has held up well, but he'll drop to second place so far in this class. Another Hoosier from Marion, Indiana, Jack Tedder. He has a banter chassis and, a, and three Chevy engines mounted on his machine. His wife was down here talking to me tonight before the pull got started. Very dependable tractor. You'll notice that the front two engines are hooked crank to crank with the shaft going back, a drop box in the third motor. This is a popular setup built by the legendary Ralph Banner and his shop up in northeastern Indiana. Jack Tedder, one of the popular drivers here in the Hoosier state of Indiana. The distance to be 230. Come right in about the 200 foot mark. Here again, John, it looks like the game plan tonight. You're going to have to run light on the front. That's right. And he did drift a little bit to the right side of the track, as you'll see in the replay. And also, we noticed that as he pulled away from the starting line, it seemed like the engine suddenly kicked in. He picked up a lot of tire speed all of a sudden. Here you'll see him drift to the right a little bit. And never did get the front end real high off the ground. Well, he wanted to keep it in bounds. Didn't want to go out of bounds there on the right-hand side of the track. And Jack Tedder comes in with a 197. Good luck, son. Six inches and six-tenths of an inch. 197, 6.6. .6. The distance to beat is still 202 to 32 feet, and the next man to try and do it will be Todd Stone of Middlebury, Vermont, and he has an Allison engine on his tractor. Here's Gardner Stone's son. Gardner is still in second place with his twin Allison at 228 feet, 7.1 inches. And here comes the general, which is the single Allison. The engine is set up almost identical to the twin. Uh, the, the Stone family, the latest word that we got just prior to Super Bowl is that uh, Gardner will be building a brand new triple engine Allison sometime in 1986. And the, will, will that be the first of its kind? That will be the second one in the country. The, second one. the chassis is already on the drawing boards. We under, boards rather. We understand that Tim Engler is going to do the chassis building and they'll have three probably injected and twin turbocharged Allisons later on in 1986. That'll be a real sight to see. Mike Holden, the other puller in southeastern Ohio with the Triple Allison. He just debuted in 1985. So the general with young Todd Stone in the driver's seat. His dad in second right now at 228.7.1. He makes a sort of a nice slow start off the line before he tries to get the tires locked in. But he's pumping the left brake. Hitting that left brake, John, really killed him out there. 
you could tell that he never really did get hooked in the way he wanted to. He never really got the, the front end and the momentum up quite enough. You have to make almost a perfect run with a single Allison out here to compete against these triple Chevys. And here it comes up on replay. We'll see how it compares with the other single Allison of Tad Will that we saw earlier. He drifted a little bit toward the right side of the track, and uh, we could see him pumping that left brake. There you can see it on the replay if you look down at his left foot. And just spun it out, lost a little momentum as he tried to pull it back into the center of the track. Good looking tractor. And here it is, uh, 183 feet, 8.3 inches, 183.8.3. John Todd. This class is a long way from over. We've got the Banner Brothers, John Heilman, Ronnie Reed, Mark Kerr, Barney Klaus, all to come. Here comes Barney Klaus Jr. from Belton, Missouri. Homemade chassis and three 426 cubic, cubic inch Hemi engines. The legendary Keith Black Hemi, 426 inches. Barney Klaus from Belton, Missouri, just south of the Kansas City area. And uh, John, this is the guy that every woman loves because he's in the rose growing business. And he's the only guy I know that in America that gives his wife a rose every day. He grows over 10 million roses a year. He's pulled coast to coast. He's pulled in California. He's going to be considerably short of the 200-foot mark and way short of several of the single Allisons out there. And from where we are, you can see the expression on his face. He doesn't look very happy with that pull. Perhaps he feels he could have pulled a little bit farther. Shoot well, up a lot of dirt here at the end. Here's the replay. He's got plenty of motors in the tractor. He's got plenty of power. And he starts drifting to the right. Here again, he's got to push that left brake to bring it around. That cuts down on your speed and your power. And there just wasn't enough left there in the end. You can see he really made a left-hand turn out there as the driver looks at it down the track. Barney Klaus, Jr. from Belton, Missouri. A very disappointing 180 feet, 6.6 .6 inches. So the, the distance to beat remains 232 feet and 1 inch, and that's John Walsh. The crew has the track ready to go again, and next up is Ronnie Reed. I believe we'll see an onslaught of uh, an attack on the lead here, Dave. Uh, Ronnie Reed from Longport, Kansas, running an area engine. Here's the guy that can give John Walsh a real run for his money. Almost identical tractors, these 8.3 liter area engines going head to head. Ronnie Reed! front wheel right off the tractor. Amazing! Quite a run for as much weaving back and forth as he did. I think we'll see on the replay that he he came to the left a little bit and then way over to the right, or came to the, the other way, came to his right, back to the left, back to his right. You can imagine he's really pumping the tires, or pumping the brakes rather, because here it is for, for that much change of direction. He got a tremendous run out of that. He had more speed off the line than anybody has had tonight. By the time he reached 75 to 100 feet, he was moving right down the left-hand side. Now he starts on the right brake, and it really pulled it around. The track has been tricky tonight. And now the tires will bite down the front tires, and you'll see and there that you can see it. left tire just snaps right off. Of course, the pull will count. It doesn't matter what happens out there, breakage-wise. They'll probably need a forklift to get him off. And here it is. It's 220 and six-tenths of an inch. And that's good enough to put him in third place. Ronnie Reed. Well, well, Mark Hare is getting ready to pull out the track, and we'll watch this Buckeye puller here in just a moment. We want to thank the folks from American Cyanamid and Counter, Case International, Implement Company, Kendall Oil Company, and Red Man Chewing Tobacco, fine sponsors of the 1986 Indy Super Bowl. Great to have the quality of these companies associated with an event of this magnitude, and we hope they're enjoying the show. Mark Hare now backing up from Springfield, Ohio with the injected Allison aircraft engine. He's been a point champion in the state of Ohio the last couple of years and 
many consider for a injected Allison. He's one of the toughest around and can turn the tires pretty fast. But he's got a big job ahead of him here tonight because the distance to beat is 232 feet, 1.1 inch. Currently in second is still Gardner Stone with a twin Allison tonight at 228 feet, 7.1 inches. In third right now is Ronnie Reed uh, breaking that front wheel and tire off his tractor. He's in third at 220 feet, 0 0.6. And currently in fourth, the Fords of Sonny Owens out of Maryland at 218 feet, 11.8 .8 inches. There seems to be a, some trouble down there on the starting line of Mark Hare. Mark Hare from Springfield, Ohio, as we said a moment ago, probably the toughest running Allison in that state. The Hare's uh, farm, just about 20 miles east of Dayton, Ohio, on the western side of the Buckeye State. He can turn the tires on this Allison very, very fast, well over 100 mile an hour, and certainly will be a threat in this class. He normally makes a real good straight run. Green flag is out from our starting flag. Doesn't waste any time getting on it. Right down the left hand side of the track. And John, that's about as good a run in that particular circumstance that you're going to make. That's right. Uh, I don't and, uh, think he would have changed a whole lot. No, no, very comparable and packed in fact perhaps a little bit uh, farther than the other single Allison engines that we've seen tonight. He did drift a little bit to the left side of the track and then pulled it back in. We'll see it on replay here. Here, here it comes up on replay, and we'll watch him drift a little bit to his left. But he was able to keep it under control and pull it back into the middle. Well, he starts drifting over the left. We've had a lot of pullers go to the left here tonight. The track's a little soft in a couple of areas also. And here again, you wouldn't change a whole lot. Maybe try to straighten it out a little bit and add a couple more feet. But that's still a very respectable run of 184 feet, 5.4 inches. We're down to three drivers in the modified class in session one. And we're ready for Dave Banter in the Banter Brothers Orange Machine. The Banters are from LaFontaine, Indiana. Well, it's always good to like to have them on the track, no matter which pull they go to. They pull coast to coast, north to south. Probably the, the most famous modified team in the world today, running five 427 Chevrolets here on Banner Orange. Dave Banner, who drives uh, for his brother Ralph. Ralph builds the tractor. David does the driving. And you got to remember now that with some of the developments in the last couple of years, they may be slightly under horsepower compared with some of the drivers that are running the Aries and the Rodex. However, they will never be out-engineered. <laughs> They're going to be running back-to-back. -back. Orange will pull first and then blue. The distance to be 232 feet, 1.1 1 .1 inch. They're the only modified of the track, had to back out of it, got back into it, and still got the full pull. John, can you believe what would have happened if he could have run straight down the center of the track? He would have gone out the back gate here. And here it is on replay, and as, as we mentioned, you'll see him drift to the right a little bit, but to, to Dave Banner tonight, it didn't make any difference. He got back into it, got the power, and pulled it out. There are big disc brakes. He came within about three feet on that right-hand side. Of, in fact, they moved the string over on that side, and he came back across the track, and here again, you're looking at somewhere around 5,000 horsepower. But boy, they make a full pull. They take the lead. And so once again, as we saw in the mini tractor class in session one, late in the class, we have a full pole and a new leader. Well, now the big question is, can the Banner Brothers tie their own mark of a full pull? And John Heilman, who's been a past national champion in several NTPA classes, will be running as the last competitor in this class. Well, the Banner Brothers are very unique. They've always been low-key in their modified tractor pulling, 
But when it came time to put the hammer down, John, they were always there. Interesting note, the Banner Brothers had two wins at the 1985 event to pass Don Hardis for the most wins in Super Bowl history. And the Banner Brothers are the only modified competitors in the history of the Super Bowl that have qualified for every event, all 13. And it was only about 13 years ago that Ralph and Dave Banner were running a single 427 Chevrolet. So, John, and all the motorsports that you've been around, in 13 years, they've gone from one to five and six engines in their wow. tractors. I guess in basketball terms, we'd be saying they have a dynasty. They've this had a dynasty. 13 grand national championships over the years. They're professional pullers. Green flag is up by the starter. And here's the ball. Super Bowl Arena. They are standing here in the arena. He took it out the back door with ease, and now they have tied themselves with back-to-back -back full pulls at the 1986 Indy Super Bowl 9,000-pound class. And I'll tell you what, Dave, he had to get on the brakes hard to keep from running into the wall down there at the edge of the exit ramp. Here, here it comes on the on the replay, and we'll see how hard he got on the brakes here at the end of this. He he could have gone another how many feet? He could have gone a lot farther. Well, he really gets the nose up. That's been the secret all evening, as we've seen. He really got the nose up, as you can see. And he had plenty of power. He's driven all around the country. Let's made. see. Right there, you can see the tractor come to a, a sudden halt and he, jump up and down. He really got on those brakes. Yeah, he didn't want to pull a John Heilman. Well, it'll be interesting now. They've had back-to-back -back full pulls with John Heilman now, the final competitor in this first round of competition. Something we may want to talk about right now, John, is if the Banner Brothers are the only full pulls, they could elect if they didn't want to to pull it off because they own both of their own tractors. They essentially would be finishing first and second, whichever way you, you look at it. John Heilman, the last competitor in the class from Rockford, Ohio. Well, he'll be running three Rodex, and uh, a lot of new developments will be taking place with the Heilman family in 1986. The word has it they'll be building a two-wheel drive uh, pulling Thunderbird, which will be interesting. Incidentally, in the 9,000-pound class of 1985, the Banner Brothers Orange won it. J&H pulling team with Norman Smith was second, and Banner Brothers Blue finished third last year. So the Banner Brothers certainly looking pretty in 1986. John Heilman, who pulled in Holland back in 1980, has been the three-time Grand National Champion. run in the evening, although he comes up short of a full pull right down the center of the track, and if he'd have had probably one more engine out there, John, he might have been out the back door. He gave it everything he had to give, and it was a beautiful run right down the center of the track, like you said, and he knew that he had to have that full pull if he wanted to stay in the competition. Well, Earl Gertie has got to feel good. The last three runs in this class, the Earl Gertie, who does a lot of the engine building on the Banners and Heilman, those uh, engines have really run tough here tonight. They beat a lot of the big aluminum block motors. Perfect run for Heilman, as you can see him come right down the center of the track. He went a little bit to the right, but it wasn't enough to bother him all that much. And 227 feet, 7.3 inches is going to wind him up near the top of the class. Back to going to put him in fourth place here tonight. That's a pretty good class. So the Banner Brothers are going to take one and two with the uh, with the full pull, and we'll see if they elect whether or not to uh, to pull that off. As as Dave mentioned earlier, they own both machines, and we will hear from the Banner Brothers with Dave a little bit later.
I'm with Dave Banner here at Trackside, our winner in the 9,000 pound modified, and you were a busy guy tonight out on the track running back to back. Now, Dave, you had an opportunity to observe all the tractors in front of you. What was going through your mind as you got ready to pull late in the nine modified? Well, I was watching how much weight they was having to run on the front, and that I, I felt like a lot of them run too heavy on the front, and I, I moved some weight back. I took some chances by moving it back because you, you lose control when you get your front end up too high, and I had really my hands full on that orange one trying to keep it in, and the, the blue one, I made a good pass. I really felt good to that blue one. One of the best runs we've seen the blue tracker make in a long time. Did you have to pump the brakes very hard tonight? On the orange one, I, I had to do it so much I had to let off of it. The, the blue one, I touched them a little bit right in down in here a little bit but not real hard you know it really felt good that was the best filling run i've made in a long time well you've had the record for the most wins in the modified classes and in fact the entire super bowl of seven with tonight that makes it number eight the record continues yeah i, I really love that too because this is the I, this is my pull you know i really love this pull and that everybody goes for this one you know well you start out on a good no doubt for the remainder of the weekend yeah, but, uh, you know, there's only one way to go when you got a record like that. You know, uh, you just can't continue that. Well, congratulations on your win tonight in the 9,000 Modified. Thank you very much. Dave Banner here at Trackside of the Indy Super Bowl. Hold it. Ernie Metzger is going to get it started in the 20,000-pound semi-truck class here in session number one. Three of these drivers will return in session number two. Ernie from Silver Lake, Indiana, in the north part of the Hoosier State with Liberty Bell. This is a professional semi-puller. And he's going to take it all the way, and the smoke machine broke. Here we'll see it on replay. He did get that. You can see the left-hand side. That front wheel on the left-hand side gets up off the ground a little bit. The smoke tube uh, went early, didn't it? Yeah, it broke at about 60 feet, and they're not going to flag him down for something like that. Okay, here's the lineup. A lot of semi-pullers here in uh, attendance of the event. And we'll have the distance for you here in just a second. As he pulls on out towards the pit area. And Dave, I assume that the NTPA officials once again will have to check the sled and give it their okay. The pull is 230 feet, 7.9 inches, 237.9, so not quite a full pull, but awfully close. That'll bring up Gary Llewellyn out of Silver Lake, Indiana, the sister truck to General Lee, followed by Don Gettlefinger out of Palmyra, Indiana. The distance for Ernie Mesker, 230 feet, 7.9 inches. They've given him a full pull because they flagged him early. So Ernie Mesker with the Liberty Bell is in the lead with a full pull. Here's Gary Llewellyn now out of Silver Lake, Indiana. The General Lee, a big uh, Kenworth chassis with a Cummins engine. He's going right down the center of the track. It's shaking violently, and he's going to come up uh, about 50 feet short out there on the track. Beautiful-looking truck. Nice steady pull, just never did quite get enough torque and horsepower to pull it out the gate, as they say in this sport. It is a good looking truck, uh, as you can see, modeled after the General Lee from the Dukes of Hazard. John, uh, some of these trucks, like the Liberty Bell and General Lee, have been used out on the NASCAR tracks for truck racing. In fact, they, these trucks will go over a 100 mile an hour. You can see on the replay here, you just got that left front wheel off the ground as there's a little bit of torque in the, in the chassis of the thing. Here's the distance, 200 feet, 6.2 inches, 200, 6.2. And so far, we've only had two trucks pull, but he's still one of the top three. So that would put him in the finals in session two, but that could change. Don Gettlefinger is getting set to pull here in the semi-truck class. He's from Palmyra, Indiana. The top three of these fellows tonight will go on into session two into the finals. He's away from the starting line and has a good head of steam built up. Little right. Boss, the Cummins engine from Palmyra, Indiana. The Gettlefinger Farm Special, and he makes about as good a run. Wow! He keeps it going, John. A nice pull for Don Gettlefinger. He really squeezed everything there was to squeeze out of that pull every inch an international chassis a cab over truck distance the beat of course is a full pull and he's going to be a few feet short but nice run and that will do that will go a long way to put him into that top three here comes the replay 
once, you, once again, you can see him jump away from that starting line. You can see the torque on the chassis as that left side begins to lift up a little bit. And it's a 228, 2.8. And so that's good enough to put him into second place. And so uh, right now, Ernie Metzger leads it with the full pull. Don Gettelfinger in second place at 228. Gary Llewellyn with a pull of 200 feet. And John Mann and J.R. Collins yet to come. Two of the best in this class. It's going to go right down to the wire, John. Johnny Mann coming up now from East Canton, Ohio with Lady Butterfly. 1974 Kenworth. Take a look at the wheelbase on this. The big side tank. He's got about a triple bunk a sleeper right behind the cab. This is an absolutely gorgeous machine. And it is used not only as a pulling truck, but as an over-the-road truck also, John. I was going to say he won't be taking any rests on this trip. This is going to be a short trip. He's away. Well, he needs a full pull to tie for the lead. Beginning to slow down a little bit. The weight box keeps coming forward. Oh, boy. He's going to come up way short out there not the kind of run that he normally makes and a nice looking truck and it was a strong pull as long as it lasted but it came to a, an, ab an abrupt end and I expect that John Mann would like to do that again if he could here it is on replay we'll see we'll see if we can tell what happened it didn't really seem that anything went wrong with the truck i just just seemed like he never really did get hooked into it and couldn't pull it out well i think it just take a lot needs a lot more power out there uh, they're getting a good bite in the semi class and he really got to turn those tires he made a good straight run there's not much different he could do if he was to re-pull again and here it is 170 feet 170 and 6.4 inches 170 and 6 for John Mann that's not good enough to put him into the top three one more to run well that means that there's no way that he can qualify for the top three it'll come back later on so far it's Don Gettlefinger Gary Llewellyn and Ernie Metzger but J.R. Collins is going to have something to say about that and he'll be up next well, J.R. Collins, the last puller to compete in this class. The top three will be coming back later on for the semi-pull-off. J.R. Collins from Chardon, Ohio. Everything is in his hands, John. He can make the top three if he has a good pull of at least 200 feet. Anything better than 200 feet will put him in the top three. It's a 1984 Mac, 104 lights around the truck. It's called Killer. Over $150,000 invested. He's a professional puller. Boy, he's got smoke machine. Look at him go! Four turbochargers. He has come to life. Holy cow! I tell you, that put the fear into everybody. We thought he was going to run right into the wall. I really did. It looked like he was over a little bit too far to the right, and he got on the brakes hard there at the end. A lot of smoke coming this way now, as I believe that smoke tube got a little bit loose. Well, there's but, no uh, question about it. He had more horsepower than anybody here tonight. And he sure showed it. That, that run was a terrific run from start to finish. He got hooked up early and just ran right out the end of the track. Let's see if we can catch how close he comes to the wall down here at the finish line. You can see the smoke tube breaks. And look at the amount of smoke that he is pumping out. Four turbochargers, probably 200 pounds of boost. Oh, it's so close as our camera catches it right down there. He had a few feet to spare. But I don't know if I'd want to run my $150,000 semi into the wall. And uh, you can see him kind of peeking out. He couldn't see how close <laughs> he was to the wall from his side of the The left side, it looks all right. It was the right side, the JR. Right side. He had to pull it back to the left there at the end to keep it from hitting the wall. But at any rate, he, he did that successfully. And it's a full pull, and I believe we'll see a pull-off in this class. Well, it'll be interesting uh, whether they have the pull-off or not, because literally they would qualify as the top two, probably bringing down Gettlefinger in as the third puller, but I'm not sure what the rules and regulations say. J.R. Collins, he's a, quite a character on the circuit and uh, spends a lot of his time and miles on the road each year. And he just loves to put on a great show and scare people a little bit at the end of the track. There we get an idea. He missed it by, it looks like, five feet. But looks uh, better from that angle than it did from here. <laughs> yeah. John, the announcers here at Trackside, Les Hauk and Ed Johnson, have just asked the crowd who their favorite is. And as you can imagine, 
J.R. Collins now in the pull-off will be the favorite with the killer Mac. However, the guy backed up to the sled right now. Ernie Metzger is going to try to have something to say about that. The Liberty Bell. Last year, Ray Carpenter won this class. J.R. Collins was second, and Johnny Mann was third. So we're going to have a new winner one way or another this year. Ernie Metzger out of Silver Lake, Indiana. The Liberty Bell on his way with the big KW. Hey, he's off to a great run. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, my word. And he takes it all the way. And there was never any doubt about that one. Oh. We saw the sled operator. He took it out this time faster than he did the first time. He sure did, and they should have added more weight to the sled. Is that I would have right? thought they'd have gone to a higher gear or added the weight and slowed them down here in the pull-off. There was never any doubt about whether or not Ernie Metzger was going to pull, get, get the full pull on that run. He got good speed early and kept it all the way through the run. Okay, here now it is on replay. He's flying. Difficult to understand on this run. Unless he made a bad run the first time, John, that's all we can speculate, that he might have had it in the wrong gear the first time that he pulled. And that would be quite a bad run to have because he had a full pull the first time. So another full pull. John, uh, we just received word from trackside. The reason we saw Ernie flying down the track is when they want to change the speed of the box, the sled operator, Ron Hickson, got it in the wrong gear. Instead of speeding the box up, he slowed the box down. And no wonder he flew out the gate. And so we might see a little bit of difference in this run. So they're going to restart the pull-off. Here he goes. Ernie Metzger's going to try it again from Silver Lake, Indiana. He still has a good head of steam built up, but he's pulling well. The weight's coming on him much quicker this time. The weight box is just about all the way forward. And I believe one way or another we'll have a winner after this next run. He got the whole front end of the truck up Wait. off of the ground towards the end of that run, and he got every bit of horsepower he could get out of that one. We'll see it on replay here in a minute. He slammed that front end down right after his run. It was really getting a good bite out there. Great calls on the back of our night. Here, here it comes on replay. Well, he's had to make an extra run here tonight because of the restart of the pull-off. Just one of those honest mistakes that can be made. Sure. You can see the uh, left hand, the left corner of the truck pulling up. And watch it slam right down here on the final uh, lunge of the truck. There, there he is. There he slams her down. And here's the distance. The pull is 206, 206, Dick. and 2 inches and 9 tenths. 206, 2.9 for Ernie Metzger. J.R. Collins standing dejectedly along the track side as they're getting ready for the trophy presentation. And the reason that he's there, he could not come back in the pull-off. They have found something wrong in the uh, front rear axle of the semi. And uh, J.R. Collins, maybe too much horsepower out there tonight. The puller from Chardon, Ohio with the killer Max. So he'll finish in second. And Ernie Metzger out of Silver Lake, Indiana is going to win it with the Liberty Bell. All right, so we'll see the top three finishers from tonight's competition in the semi-class in session two. The, the top three will be back to pull it off for the winner of that class. And I guess it remains to be seen if J.R. Collins will be back. He will be back in that session. J.R. would be coming back even though he finished second here. He still made a pull-off tonight. Ernie Metzger and Don Gettelfinger, that should be the three. And so we'll see those three in session Session two, and that wraps up session one of the 1986 Indy Super Bowl number 13. <laughs>